What's going on YouTube? It's Bobby, that geek dad. And we're at the start of holiday season, which usually means it's phone upgrade time for most people. Now you can go with an Android device and you can go with a Windows device and an iOS device. But if you've decided that you're going to either stick to or switch to an iOS device, this year Apple launched the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus. Now, which one should you get or should you even upgrade from your current iPhone? Let's find out. There's no really getting around it. The iPhone 7 and 7 Plus look more or less exactly like the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus from 2014. They are now water resistant, but not fully waterproof. Try to keep them submerged in a meter of water for more than 30 minutes, and things are not gonna go your way. Apart from the water resistance, there are four main external differences between the 6 and 7. First, the antenna lines on the back have been moved to the top and bottom of the phone, but depending on your phone's color, they will either blend in like the black or jet black, or stick out with the rest of the colors. Second, the camera bump has been enlarged and more artfully crafted into the rear casing, which looks really nice on the smaller phone with a single camera, but okay with the larger 7 Plus. Third, the home button. The button no longer moves, it's totally solid. A linear vibration unit that Apple calls the Taptic Engine jolts when you apply pressure to the button, tricking your brain into feeling a click. It's nothing like the clumsy haptic feedback on other phones, but really does feel like a click. And of course, finally, there's no headphone jack, but we'll get to that more later on. Apple claims that the combination of a larger battery that fills some of the space formerly used by the headphone jack, the more efficient processor, and iOS 10 improvements allows the iPhone 7 to run two more hours than the 6S and the 7 Plus to go for an hour longer than the 6S Plus. With my day-to-day -day testing, I was able to get about a day and a half of use with the 7 and almost two and a half days with the 7 Plus as a heavy user of texting, social media, Slack, music, and video streaming, and phone calls. Compared to the 6 and 6S, this was about a half a day more each on the smaller version and larger version. Sound performance is definitely one of the bigger improvements of the 7 and 7 Plus. One speaker is at the bottom of the phone, as it has been, and the other is actually integrated into the earpiece. They're much louder than before and sound decent, with better treble performance in particular. They're never going to replace real speakers, but you can watch a bunch of YouTube videos or Netflix and not get annoyed, and speaker calls are dramatically improved. 3D Touch is still present on the iPhone 7's display, which I still only use with one app, and the display itself is improved. It's not as insane as the 2K OLED panels that have been popping up on Android phones, but it's a sharp, bright, and beautiful LCD, and sharp, bright, beautiful LCDs are nice to look at. Both my 7 and 7 Plus are noticeably warmer than the 6S display, which I've come to appreciate. You won't notice it in most apps, but the display can show a wider range of colors now, which is really obvious when you look at photos taken by the iPhone 7's camera, which also captures a wider range of colors. Photos taken by the 7 look ridiculously good on the iPhone 7 display. You can tell the difference between a 7 photo and a 6S photo on the 7 screen almost instantly. That's the only place you'll really see the benefit of the new screen for now, but hopefully app developers will take this new feature and run with it, particularly with gaming in iOS 10. Speaking of iOS 10, it's wonderful. Seriously, it's the nicest iOS update in a long time with a clear sense of how you should flow between operations and much more inviting visual detail. It has a slick new version of iMessage with all kinds of new features, a new version of Siri that can be extended by third-party apps, better integration with smart home devices, a much improved control center, better music and news apps, and a ton of other small tweaks and features. My personal favorite iOS 10 tweak is that Apple has gotten rid of the slide to unlock because the Touch ID sensor on the 6S and 7 are so fast. Sliding to the right from the lock screen now brings you to a widget screen and sliding from the left brings up the camera. You unlock the phone by just pressing the home button which is enough for Touch ID to recognize your fingerprint. The iPhone 7 represents another upgrade over the 6S. There's a new faster f.18 lens, the addition of optical image stabilization, a new four color true tone flash, and wider color capture. This all adds up to a decent improvement, but the iPhone 6S was already operating at the top of the scale. In low light, that faster lens and optical image stabilization means that the 7 outperforms the 6S. But compared to the 6S, the iPhone 7 is a step improvement, not a major leap. The attempt at a major leap is on the iPhone 7 Plus. Instead of a single lens and sensor, the iPhone 7 Plus is two. 
the same f 1.8 28mm wide-angle lens as the 7, and a f 2.8 56mm telephoto lens. These cameras work simultaneously and are always working together. Right now, what this means is that you can switch to a true 2x zoom by tapping on a button, which is very nice. You can also digitally zoom the 1x lens to 2x, where the telephoto takes over, and then digitally zoom the 2x lens to 10x. Digital zoom is still digital zoom. Anything past about 3.5x definitely looks like what, you, what you'd expect from grainy digital zoom. Front cameras are almost important than rear cameras in our selfie world, and the iPhone 7's front camera is excellent, with a new 7 megapixel sensor replacing the 5 megapixel unit in the 6S. The lens is not quite as wide angle as Samsung's cameras, but it's sharp, bright, and the retina flash is still a terrific idea that was absolutely worth lifting from Snapchat. It's a solid improvement and a welcome one. The iPhone 7 and 7 Plus clearly hold their own, but they don't blow the pack away. That might all change when Apple starts taking advantage of the dual cameras, but for now, I don't think the 7 Plus will keep anyone away from a mirrorless DSLR. So there's no headphone jack on the iPhone 7. Apple says it needed to take out the headphone jack so it could make more space for better cameras, the Taptic Engine, even though the 6S also had a Taptic Engine, and perhaps most importantly, a bigger battery. Apple ships a pair of its EarPod headphones with a lightning connector in the box, as well as a lightning to 3.5mm dongle so that you can use your traditional headphones. You're not totally out of luck if you have a big investment in corded headphones, but you're going to want to stock up on those adapters if you regularly plug your phone into a car or have a variety of headphones you like to use. The dongle is small enough that it's not obtrusive, but also small enough so that it's destined to get lost if you move it around a lot. The Lightning EarPods are exactly like Apple's regular EarPods, which is to say they sound average to bad and fit either fine or not great depending on your ears. The real move Apple's trying to make is to wireless audio mainstream with everyone. For someone like myself who has been using Bluetooth regularly for over two years, not having a headphone jack is only annoying when playing music in an older car that an auxiliary cable is needed while charging at the same time. But if you use wired headphones regularly, then listening and charging is going to be a frustrating balance of remembering to charge when you can so that you can listen when you can. This struggle is real, especially for my wife. Most disappointing is that Apple didn't put more work into making wireless audio a better overall listening and sounding experience on the iPhone 7. If you're going to push for this standard, shouldn't you welcome old and new users of Bluetooth with something inviting? If you squint, it's possible to see an iPhone that has no wires at all, an iPhone that does everything wirelessly, including charging. But the iPhone 7 is not that iPhone. In fact, right now, you need more wires, dongles, and adapters to make it work with the rest of your life than ever before, unless you adopt Bluetooth. I love that stuff, and it's part of the thrill of being an early adopter. But if you don't want to devote even a moment's effort toward figuring out how to do something as simple as charge your phone and listen to audio at the same time, it might be worth waiting for things to settle into place. The iPhone 7 and 7 Plus are legitimately among the most interesting, opinionated, powerful headphones Apple has ever shipped, and the most confident expression of the company's vision in a long time. iOS 10 is excellent, the cameras are better, and the performance is phenomenal, and the batteries last longer. These are all terrific phones. But they are also incomplete. Apple's making a big bet on iMessage and Siri apps in iOS 10, but it hasn't paid off yet. Apps haven't been updated to use the Taptic Engine or the new wide color gamut display. The entire ecosystem of new headphones and adapters required to make use of lightning and wireless audio is just getting off the ground. By the time developers even come close to hitting the performance limits of the A10 Fusion chip, Apple will be shipping the A11 Fusion Pro with six blades. The entire time I was using the iPhone 7, I felt like I had a prototype of next year's disguised as an iPhone 6. All those bold bets on the future are legitimately exciting, but here in the present, using the iPhone 7 in a case feels a lot like using an iPhone 6S with a weirder home button, more adapters, but at least with a new cooler color. If you need a new iPhone right now, sure, buy an iPhone 7. The little one starts at $649 for 32GB of storage and ranges up to $849 for 256GB. 
and the plus starts at 769 and goes up to 969 for 256 gigabytes of storage. But make sure you factor in the extra cost of headphone adapters or Bluetooth headphones because you'll end up needing them. You'll probably be fine, but at least your photos will be better. This is an iPhone that lays a marker in tech history, mostly due to a lack of a headphone jack, and it will serve as the foundation for many important changes to come. We're going to remember the iPhone 7. It's going to be the next iPhones that actually build a useful future on that foundation. So I think the question you should be asking yourself this year isn't whether you should upgrade to an iPhone 7 or a 7 Plus. It should be, should you upgrade in the first place? I think if you're an average user and you have the 6 or the 6 Plus, you could probably stay where you are. Definitely if you have the 6S or 6S Plus. But if you're a power user and you're kind of an early adopter or would like to know what it's like to be an early adopter, then sure, go ahead and pick up the 7 or the 7 Plus if you need more battery and you like to take a whole lot of photos. So that's going to be it for me today, guys. Please make sure to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button, which should be like right down here for more videos and especially my review of the Google Pixel. And as always, be excellent to each other, and I'll talk to you guys later.